For the first time in nearly the entire year so far, right now is the best time to photograph things in space. I have my telescope set up out and ready right behind me because tonight I'm going to be photographing some pictures of space. Specifically, I see 1396 or the Elephant's Trunk Nebula and I'm very excited to get this summer nebula starting to kick around. The short answer for why right now is the best time for you to go outside and enjoy the night sky is simply because the Milky Way season has arrived on the premises. This means that unlike any other time of the year, the months of June through September are the times where you're going to be able to see the most space objects in the night sky that are most accessible to you. In today's video, I'm going to be photographing the Elephant's Trunk Nebula and taking you guys along for the ride, and I will reveal my image of the Elephant's Trunk Nebula taken with my budget telescope right behind me. So without further ado, let's get into it. Wait a minute, actually there's a spider on my telescope, it's one of those jumpy ones. Even though it's the best time to photograph objects in the night sky right now, there is a big problem at hand that's affecting a lot of the Midwest area or kind of just the North America. But the problem is the wildfire smoke, the Canadian wildfire smoke specifically. The wildfire smoke from the Canada wildfires has been a thing that's been going on for probably about a couple years now. And every single summer it's put a halt on some of my astrophotography things. And the problem with this is that because, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, the visibility is pretty bad right now. And you also so can't really see blue skies anymore even when it's supposed to be sunny. On the other hand, this makes imaging very, very difficult at night because you have to shoot through a lot of wildfire smoke and it basically makes the skies overcast if you want to compare it that way. We've been dealing with a lot of the heavy smoke because it's been blowing down into the Midwest. So. Big problem for any astrophotographers are living around here. But when it's not as dense, you still are able to image and get some decent pictures at least. So save the more faint targets for a dark sky site, maybe in the west that's away from a lot of this stuff. This of course puts strain on my telescope mount, the Skywatcher GTI, because it has trouble finding and tracking the objects in the night sky when you can't see a lot of stars due to the smoke that's affecting the visibility. Nonetheless though, after kind of months of tweaking the Skywatcher GTI, I have finally been able to to fix the mount and can say that it's working and tracking amazingly. You might notice that the counterweight shaft is pushed out a little bit, which is to kind of balance the deck a little bit better because a lot of telescopes are back heavy and you want to make sure to make your telescope track properly that you want to balance both RA and declination, which are the two axes that you track the night sky in. Now you might be wondering where to look for the summer objects and let me tell you, here's some constellations to look out for because they are quite literally everywhere. Look out in the Milky Way core to the constellation of Sagittarius where well, you will find a ton of objects for you to photograph or visually observe at a dark sky site or with your backyard telescope. You can use your naked eye, your iPhone, binoculars, or a small telescope or a computerized telescope to observe and photograph these things. Write down on your list the constellations of Sagittarius and Cygnus and Scorpio. These are the three constellations that I consider to be the best for finding nebulae and photographing them. In Sagittarius, you have the Lagoon and Trifid Nebula, the Eagle Nebula, a lot of those amazing bright nebulae targets, and the Pillars of Creation, which is a famous Hubble Space Telescope image is located inside the Eagle Nebula, so that's pretty cool. Next you have the Lagoon and Trifid Nebula, which are one of the brightest nebulae in the night sky, so make sure you guys go check that one out. Then in this constellation of Scorpio or Scorpius, you have the Rho Ophi Ophiuchi, Ophiuchi, whatever it is. I, I like to call it RHO or Rho. To find Rho, you'll just look at the star Antares and it's very easy to find. You'll also find a lot of star clusters on the bottom of the constellation as well. And then of course Cygnus, the infamous constellation that we all love and appreciate. This is probably the constellation that you should be looking out for the most. It rises high in the night sky and offers the most nebulae to look at and photograph. There are a ton of objects in here, like the Vale Nebula, the North American Nebula, the Crescent Nebula, the Seder Region, and not far from it, the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, which I'll be getting into in just a second. It definitely is the host of the best objects in the night sky. So let's run down what the Elephant's Trunk Nebula is because I'm very excited to kick this one off and I'll be doing it in a different kind of look today. So let's talk about it. The Elephant's Trunk Nebula, or IC 1396A, is an emission nebula full of space gas and dust located in the constellation 
combination of not Cygnus, but Cepheus. It is really large and fairly bright actually, but not too bright. It's moderately bright. To observe this object, you will need a telescope of some sort and a DSLR lens to really see the actual elephant's trunk part of it. Once seeing example images of what it actually looks like, you guys will see why they call it the elephant's trunk nebula. But this all won't be possible to take a picture of for over 10 hours straight if I don't have a mount to track the sky because it does move at a very slow motion. To freeze the object in place, I'm gonna be using my Skywatcher Star Venture GTI, which is now all tuned up and ready to track accurately now because I was having some issues before. So to photograph the object, I have a specialized telescope for astrophotography to photograph this thing. And this is the Aperture EDR61. It's basically an upgraded telescope that has special glass and other things to help really build this image from nothing to an astronomical image that everyone can enjoy. I will need a good camera to photograph this and also a light pollution filter to observe the object without having to worry about a full moon because we have a full moon tonight. We're gonna have to get our, that off of our hands somehow, right? Well, that's why I have the Optolong L Ultimate, which highlights the oxygen three and hydrogen alpha gases in this nebula. So I won't have to worry about not getting those details because the filter lets me view them without having to worry about the full moon or any light pollution problems because I live in a border late backyard under a lot of wildfire smoke right now. So there's a wasp in there. I'm very excited to kick this off tonight because I haven't really been out here in quite a bit. So we're going to see what happens tonight. Well guys, we made it and boy, it is a beautiful summer night out here. The time is 2.05 AM. Yeah, I won't be going to bed for another hour and a half. Even though despite the strawberry moon with its whatever 130% bigger brightness or whatever they say on the news and the smoke in the air, other than that, we are having a beautiful clear night out here. One of the first that we've had this summer. It really does feel odd being out here in shorts and a t-shirt and surprisingly not really having a lot of the bugs come out and eat me yet. But we are gonna get to that point soon, so fingers crossed. And it's crazy that the gear that I have that has been photographing this has been rather inexpensive. And if you've watched my video on the best budget astrophotography rig, you would know exactly what I mean. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Is the strawberry moon posing a big problem for my setup right now? And the best answer for that is, well, not really. My Optolong L Ultimate narrowband filter only lets in light that's only three nanometers in width, which means that I'm barely letting in any of that moonlight. I'm only focusing on the colors that I want to observe in this nebula region. This means that I'm only letting in hydrogen alpha and oxygen three emissions, which are the colors that you'll see at the end of this video when I reveal my image of the elephant's trunk nebula. I don't have to worry about the moon, and I've heard that the Optolung L Ultimate can pierce through thin clouds and even some moderate smoke. So we're gonna see if that's true tonight. I plan on photographing this for a couple more nights because I wanna add some exposure onto this thing. The smoke's having a moderate impact on my images, so I wanna make sure that I'm making them look as best as I possibly can. Man, I just can't wait to make more videos out in the backyard for you guys. I mean, this is just, absolutely stunning and I really hope that we get those northern lights soon because it's quite magical to see northern lights back here. I think what I've said is all said and done and I hope you guys enjoy my image of the elephant's trunk nebula at the end of this video which should be coming at you in a few seconds. I hope you took something away from this video in clear skies. I'll see you guys soon.